When I first started investing, I was a Grand Canyon River guide living in a teepee. In five years, I was a millionaire. If I can do it, let me tell you guys, you can do it. Phil Town is an investor, hedge fund manager, and three-time New York Times bestselling author who is on a mission to inspire future generations of investors. He's helped hardworking people gain financial freedom by teaching them to take control of their future. Over the past 15 years, Phil has hosted thousands of students at his workshop. He teaches how to evaluate investments the way the best investors in the world have done for years. Today, Phil wants to teach you how to do the same. And now, here's Phil Town. Hey guys, I'm Phil Town, and I'm a New York Times best-selling author, and I run a company called Rule One Investing. And I really want to thank you guys for taking the time to join me today right here at my ranch, where I'm going to do some pretty cool things. I'm going to start by looking you right in the eye, and I'm going to say, first, I can teach you how to invest wisely. And second, you're going to learn all this without any financial mumbo jumbo or anything complex or complicated. And by the end of this short interactive training, you're going to know how to massively reduce your risk in the stock market, even in markets like this one, which are really volatile, really scary. How do the best investors in the world generate returns of 26% or more per year compounded year after year by just doing something really simple? While even the top mutual fund managers Stuff they can't do, and they're just getting 5 6%. The single investment tool, which you can find for free online, that for the last 92 years has accurately predicted the market with the precision of a Swiss watch. And why I don't like almost any mutual funds, and why you shouldn't either. Oh, and how to buy shares in a wonderful business when these shares are on sale big time and way, way below what they would normally cost so that you end up buying $10 bills for five bucks or less, and you maximize your gains over time. Now, depending on where you're watching the training, there should be a chat box on the right side of your screen or a link to it above or below me. And here's what I want you to do. I want you to jump into chat right now, if it's available for you, right? And tell me who you are and where you're from. We have attendees at this from all over the world, and we're going to have some fun together in that chat today. Okay, so who am I, and what does all this have to do with you? Well, first thing you should know is all of this just happened by pure accident. I never had any intention of investing, much less teaching anybody about it. And I certainly had no plans to be here with you guys today. I came from a blue collar background. I went through the military. I was a combat veteran. And when I got home, I became a river guide on the Colorado River, way out there in Arizona in the Grand Canyon, living in a teepee in the winter time. I was a total financial dunce, you guys. I made $4,000 a year. So hopefully you're doing better than I was. And I didn't have any plans of doing anything else ever, okay? And that all the day I almost killed myself. In 1980, I was guiding a group of outward bound trustees on a rafting trip. Now, the first thing you should know about this trip is that these guys are bigwigs. They're, they're just really fabulously wealthy people who are, you know, massive net worth kind of guys. And they're all putting their lives in my hands. And the second thing you should know is that I'm really good at this. A very experienced rafting guide. But I'll tell you, man, what happened on that day on the river? That had never happened to me before. <laughs> And the third thing you should know is a little kind of river guide secret, okay? Even the most wicked, nasty rapids in the Grand Canyon have what we call a line. Now, this is a kind of a safe path through danger. So even though it looks scary, when you follow the line, when you get on the line, all the danger is pretty much to the left or to the right of the boat while you're going cranking right down the middle and having a great time. So rafting is actually pretty safe, even in the Grand Canyon, even with these big, huge drops. Well, it is as long as the guide doesn't blow it, which maybe, as you can guess, I am just about to do. So here I am, a young financial dunce river guide with all these millionaires and billionaires in my boat. And as we approach a rapid about halfway down the river, we've been on the river for about a week. We're getting to a rapid called Crystal, and my life changes forever. Now, Crystal shouldn't have been a problem, usually isn't a problem, although 
This particular rapid is really nasty. I've been down that river, through that rapid about 40 times at this point. And if I was rowing the boat, right, if I had oars, I can do this thing in my sleep. But this day is different. This day, I wasn't rowing. I was guiding a paddle raft and something was happening in the water. I still can't explain exactly, but here's what happened. We got these guys on the shore. We looked at the rapid. It's running gigantically at this point in time. The water's moving about 80,000 cubic feet per second, going straight into a wall where it then turns right and drops 35 feet. And that's a huge circulating hole right there. If you go in there, you can die. In fact, people who have gotten their boats down there have died in that rapid. So of course, we always stay to the right. We try to stay away from that big drop. And in the paddle boat, you have to have paddlers who can make it to the right. So I'm telling these guys, you guys got to go with everything you've got. And they start down the river. We go down the river backwards. We're getting close to the place where I'm going to tell them to go. And I see the spot I want to go at. And I say, hit it. And they start paddling with everything they've got. And I realize immediately something is wrong with the boat or these guys aren't strong enough. I, to this day, I don't know. But that boat got swept into the main current. And man, you know how like the hair goes up on the back of your head? It's kind of like that, except that at that moment, I just had that, I don't know, it was kind of like an, a moment of total silence. Like I'm watching this thing. And I realize I got a choice. I can either try to hit this rapid straight and maybe only some of us will die and I'm in the back and it won't be me. Or I can take a chance and get sideways to it and try to make it to the other side. And in that moment, I made that split decision. My life changed forever. I made the decision to go for it. We turned the boat. I yell at these guys, paddles if your life depends on it. Their eyes are bugging out of their head as they crest over and they're looking down into this giant washing machine. And we just suddenly made that boat fly. I honestly don't know how they did it. The boat just, I still get choked up. The boat just goes slamming into this cliff. It stands on its tail and somehow it just doesn't go over backwards. I mean, I'm literally hanging off the back end of the river and the boat slides sideways and drops down around the big drop and we got to the other side of this thing we were barely even wet and we paddled over to the beach and this, God, this first guy gets out of the boat and throws up so i know he was pretty excited and the next guy gets out i'm getting off right now and i pull the boat up to the shore and this guy gets out and grabs me and gives me a bear hug and said thank you for saving my life he said, thank you look i owe you and i want to pay you back and maybe you're happy being a river guide. Man, if you want to learn about the stock market, I can teach you to be a smart investor. And I'm like, I make $4,000 a year, right? I make four. Th the last thing in my mind ever would be being an investor. But something happened right there. I, to this day, I can't explain it exactly. Maybe it's Dharma, maybe it's karma, whatever. But I don't know. I just opened up to it. It's, it's impossible when I look back at it now. But I'm just sitting there going, yeah, I, I would be interested in that. And to, I, I really don't know why. So I took him up on his offer. And at the end of the season, instead of living the rest of the winter in the barn, I went out to San Diego, California, and I began to apprentice for this guy. I apprenticed for a year, probably, you know, $50,000 worth of apprenticeship kind of thing um, if you had to pay for it. And I started a year later with just a little bit of money, about a thousand bucks. And the rest, as they say, is history. I not only became a successful investor, but I was able to take what I learned from my mentor and I turned it into a system that I've used for, I don't know, 40 years now. And I've taught tens of thousands of other students how to beat the big guys in the market with little or no experience. I also wrote two New York Times number one's bestsellers. One's called Rule Number One. The other's called Payback Time. Then I wrote a book about investing with my daughter, Danielle, called Invested that got to be number seven on the New York Times bestseller list. Except what does all this have to do with you? Well, the answer is everything. Because if I can do it, you can too. And in the next few minutes, I'm going to show you how.
So getting wealthy, getting rich, and doing it without a lot of risk, this is the key, is really not that difficult when you know how. You guys, it's really not. You don't have to take risks. You don't have to worry about your retirement money. You don't have to give up a lot of capital. It can be done very safely just by knowing what numbers to look at and how to start diving in. You just have to follow a well-beaten path. How about a path that's over 90 years old and has made more millionaires than any other path I'm aware of that I discovered from my teacher who was on that path, who learned it from Buffett and other investors like Warren Buffett and Charlie Munger, who learned it from Ben Graham, who taught it during the Depression and made a fortune. And I'm going to show you guys this path and how to follow it. And here's the keyword, safely. I'm going to show you guys how to get very, very rich based on what I do with my money. And if you're skeptical, that's okay. Just remember, I was skeptical too. Just stay with me here and just keep an open mind, okay? In fact, many of the most successful students of this style of investing started as skeptics. So these are real people just like you, just like me, regular people who experience great returns by following this simple system. Okay, so let's get started. What do you say? If you haven't logged into chat, just do it now, okay? In a minute, I'm gonna have a little contest that you're gonna love. But first I wanna take a minute and just get some basic information out of the way here that we gotta do. My lawyers make me say this to be compliant with the SEC legal regulations. Our attorneys require that I let everybody know that we are number one, not your financial advisor, okay? Everything you're gonna see, all the slides, all the examples, all the rates of return we talk about, any stock ideas you hear, these are all for educational and entertainment purposes only because we're just your educators, we're not your advisors, okay? So this is our opinion only, not to be construed as investment advice in any way. And by the way, it's important that you know I actually am an investment advisor because they made me go get a license, but we're not your investment advisor if you haven't already figured that out. So we always recommend you get professional help before you act on anything that you hear from any advisors or anyone out there, but particularly today, okay? Now, what's really exciting is that the small investors, guys like you and me when I started, have a huge advantage over the professional fund managers, huge including the managers of your mutual funds and ETFs. And I'm going to spend some time getting deep into why, but this is going to blow your mind, I promise you. I'm also going to describe how the top investors in the world, people like Buffett, Charlie Munger, how these guys invest and get these monster returns that they get. So, okay, let's have some fun. What do you say? Here we go. If you're not on chat yet, though, <laughs> do it now, because here we go. Assuming it's available to you, that button will be on the right-hand side of your PC or your Mac or at the top right of your iPad or your iPhone or a connected device. And we're going to have a little contest, and it's going to be a true and false game. And your job is to put the answer, your immediate response, in chat, if it's available, okay? Now, it's just true or false, but you're welcome to add your reason to the chat if you really want to. And don't be afraid. You're going to do this great. So are you ready? Okay. First one. True or false, the market always goes up in the long run. Put your answer in there. And here we go. You can look at a chart 200 years long from 1800 till recently. The stock market obviously goes up in the long run. In fact, in real $1,800, the stock market's produced $1 million for every dollar put into the stock market 200 years ago. So yeah, always goes up in the long run. Hmm. But that kind of brings up another question, doesn't it? I'm a little worried about a market crash, and you should be too. So the question would be, how should I protect my capital if in the short run, the market crashes? So I got to answer this question. This is a pretty important question. So I'm going to show you guys two brilliant tools that you can use. The first one helps me understand the state of the market. It's called the Schiller PE. Now this was developed by Robert Schiller at Yale, who got the Nobel Prize in economics in 2013 for developing this. It's a really powerful tool. And what it shows is that the markets have an average Schiller PE of about 15. Now when it gets above that into the 20s, it starts to become a pricey market and then it tends to crash. 
Okay. Now, another tool that I love to use is one that Warren Buffett uses that sometimes called the Buffett indicator that's used to determine if the market is overpriced against its historical average. The tool is called the Wilshire GDP ratio. Wilshire GDP. That's gross domestic product ratio. And what this does is it compares the value of all the stocks in the market, that's the Wilshire, against the total gross domestic product, which is really basically all of the sales of all the different kinds of activity going on in the country. So this compares the value of all the stocks in the market, which is the Wilshire, against the total GDP or gross domestic product, which is basically all of the revenue coming in from all of our companies and the government. Now, when the value of all the stocks and the GDP get way out of line, the market is massively overvalued. And Warren Buffett says, now you're playing with fire. So what happens when these tools tell me that the markets are getting a little crazy, either crazy high or crazy low? What do we do? Oh man, this is where we start to make some great moves based on the principles that were taught to us all the way back to Ben Graham that we call rule number one investing. Next one, true or false? The stock market is rational. So stock price equals stock value. Oh, this is really exciting because guess what they teach in business school? They teach stock price equals stock value in a market like the stock market. Hmm. But in our view, I mean, a normal person, you look at this and you go, it's obviously false. Stock prices and values often get completely disconnected. Market can be all over the place, either too high or too low, which is one of the reasons why the very core tenet of rule one investing is buy great companies when their value is far higher than their price. And this happens all the time. Essentially, what we think is we buy fear and we sell greed. This is something we're going to dive deep into. So true or false, you must take a high risk to get a high return. Yeah, well, that seems pretty reasonable, right? I mean, gosh, nobody's just going to give you a massive return unless you take a lot of risk, right? Well, not necessarily. Not necessarily at all. In fact, Warren Buffett says that real risk is just not knowing what you're doing. I mean, think about it for a second. Have you ever gone to like a flea market or a garage sale and somebody's just unloading something? You know, they got a Bowflex machine there and they're giving it away for 20 bucks. I mean, how much risk are you taking if you buy a completely good Bowflex machine for $20? You could sell it on eBay tomorrow for 100. So risk and reward are very much about what you know. And one way to think about this real easily is that you're going to drive to work tomorrow, right? You're going to get in your car and you're going to go down the road. Are you taking so much risk that you feel like you got to fill out your will? I don't think so. You know you're going to get there. It's not a lot of risk, okay? Now, let's do the same job in the same vehicle and go to the same goal, except you're not driving. Your 10-year-old nephew is driving, and now you ain't getting there at all. Same journey, but one journey is done by somebody who knows something, and the other is done by someone who's ignorant. Investing is the same way. All right, next one. Okay, true or false? Diversification through passive index investing is smart and safe for your retirement. Okay, now this is what's taught in business school, that diversification through a lot of passive investments in exchange traded funds and mutual funds is the smart way to go. This is what you'll hear from financial experts everywhere on TV, all over the place, okay? Now, it's true that that's a good way for you to get to retirement if you stick to it over a long period of time. You will get there and you will become wealthy enough to have a good retirement. The problem is that if you're 45 years old and you have 20 years before you want to retire and you've put all your money into your kid's college education, into the house you're buying, into living, and you don't have a lot of money stacked up, then diversification through passive index investing very likely will not get you where you want to go. It turns out, in fact, that for a person that's in the last part of their working life, diversification through passive index investing is about certainly going to guarantee you a miserable retirement and you're going to run out of money by the time you're 75. So I'm going to say it's true if you're 20 years old and false if you're pretty much any other age. True or false, you can't beat the market. 
Now, this is something they teach in business school, that the market is perfectly priced all the time, therefore no one can beat it, therefore diversify like crazy and have your money spread all over kingdom come because nobody can beat the market, right? Except I'm gonna show you a whole bunch of people who did. I mean, obviously some of them are famous. Warren Buffett, Charlie Munger have crushed the market for 60 straight years. And we're gonna to learn today just exactly how they went about doing that. But man alive, some books have been written that said you can't do this and brought up Buffett as an example and said, hmm, we got to consider Warren Buffett. He's obviously beaten the market. How did he do it? And it turns out they're basically saying Warren Buffett is like a lucky monkey flipping coins. Every once in a while, you get a monkey who can hit 100 heads in a row. It doesn't mean the monkey knows anything. And Buffett heard this, he read the book, and went to Columbia University and said, they've sort of called me a lucky monkey. So I thought I'd bring a bunch of examples of people who do what I do and who also crush the market. And he listed out one fund manager after another that does what he does, this handful of maybe 20 guys who do what Warren does, who have crushed the market year after year for well over 20 years. So he showed 100 people. So here's what Buffett said. Imagine that you've got a zoo and in it is a monkey who's beating the coin flipping contest, right? He's hitting heads, 100 heads in a row. That could absolutely be what they said in this book. It's just luck. But what if you got a monkey in a zoo in Hong Kong too, right? One in Omaha, one in Hong Kong. All right, still maybe lucky. What if you got one in Boston? Still maybe lucky. But what if you have one zoo that has 20 monkeys in it and all of them are flipping 100 heads in a row? Then it's not luck anymore then there's something in the food, okay? I don't know what it is, but something's in the food. It is no longer a bunch of lucky monkeys. And that's exactly Buffett's point. He said, we're not lucky monkeys. We have a system and the system beats the market for anyone who uses it. And I'm gonna teach you guys how right now. So true or false, the big guys control the stock market. So the rule one principles that I'm gonna teach you guys are not what you're gonna hear from these so-called experts and these big guys who are running these huge pension funds and mutual funds and ETFs. You're not gonna hear about this. You are gonna hear a different story entirely from the financial services industry. They're gonna tell you this. They're gonna tell you, give me your money and never ever take it back. So never be out of the market. They're also gonna tell you as an individual investor, you can't possibly handle this. You can't do investing by yourself. You must give me your money. You're gonna put it in a mutual fund. Mutual funds though, Jack Bogle figured out over at Vanguard are just shadowing the market. They're not doing anything smart. Mutual funds charge you a whopping fee and they're actively trading all the time, trying to beat the market. And guess what the results show us? They don't beat the market. Here's Fidelity Mutual Fund against the S&P 500, okay? Fidelity, one of the biggest mutual funds in the world. The S&P 500 index, nobody's managing that. That's free. And here's the Janus Fund against the S&P. Huh, looks pretty similar. Oh, here's a bunch more against the S&P 500. They're being managed and they're not beating the thing that's free. They're not beating the market. Warren Buffett thinks that mutual fund managers aren't going to give you anything in the market. The guy from Harvard Business School, Jack Meyer, this guy, thinks mutual fund investing is a gigantic scam and Jack was running Harvard's entire fund. And by the way, you've probably been told that mutual funds are so-called safe haven. Guess what? They aren't. And you know this, you've been in mutual funds when they've dropped like a brick. They don't have your best interest in mind. They have the fund manager's best interest in mind. So where is that safe haven, huh? The safe haven I go to, same one Warren Buffett uses. You think he puts his money in mutual funds? I don't think so. I go to the rule one investing safe haven. Ben Graham started using this rule back in the 1930s and he compounded his money. Get this, in the depression and during World War II at over 22% per year. It means he's doubling his money almost every three years while the rest of the country is just in enormous financial meltdown and distress and doesn't know what to do. And this guy's making a fortune. And then he went and taught these principles of rule one investing to Warren Buffett at Columbia in the early 1950s. And Warren first applied these principles, starting with just a little bit of money, just like you and me. 
and made millions and then began teaching the principles in his letters every year and then finally came out and started having mass annual meetings that people have gone to, even coming all the way over from China. And he uses those principles to this day, 90 years old. Charlie Munger, to this day, using these principles. This is a guy who won't buy green bananas. He's 97. He's 97, and he's using these principles. Rule one investors, Bill Ackman, running $10 billion. Monash Pabrai, billion dollars. Eddie Lampert, one of the biggest, most successful investors in the world. David Einhorn started with almost nothing in 1994. Within a few months, had $10 million. Julian Robertson, one of the most successful investors, compounding money for his clients at 34% a year for 30 years. Lou Simpson worked for Warren Buffett running Geico's fund. Unbelievably successful investor, 24% a year. On average, these guys are hitting 27% a year, and these are audited portfolios over 20 and 30 year periods of time slaughtering the stock market. And all the time, they're all trying to teach you guys how to do this. It's one more reason to learn the system now, and hopefully you'll be able to attend my upcoming workshop so you can invest exactly like these self-made billionaires, just like I do. And if they can do it, and if I can do it, guys, you can do it. And you can do it without investing in mutual funds and ETFs. You can do it by investing in yourself. Okay, next one. True or false, laziness bordering on sloth is the investment strategy that produces the highest returns in the world. I love that. Laziness bordering, okay. This is a principle of rule one investing. It's fantastic. And it's based on what Charlie Munger once said. The big money isn't in buying and it isn't in selling. It's in the waiting. Isn't that exactly the opposite of what everybody else does? right? You'd think these superstar investors would be trading like crazy, like all these guys are running around trading, buying something and selling something every day, millions of shares. Man, the exact opposite is true. In fact, Manesh Babrai and Warren Buffett, both people I deeply respect, have said some really funny things about this. Buffett said, look, our investment style is lethargy bordering on sloth. That means you're not doing much, most of the time. Now, when I learned that, I thought, ah, I have found a home. <laughs> I mean, shoot, I'm a river guy. I don't like working. And Manesh Babrai, one of my favorite investors, a super good guy, manages a billion dollar fund. I was at an event, I was chatting with his wife and somebody came up to Monash and he said, hey, Monash, how many people does it take to run your billion dollar hedge fund? And his wife just jumped in and said, it takes 0.1. <laughs> which means her husband is spending, in her view, about 10% of his time on investing, a billion dollars, and 90% of his time playing bridge and going out to play golf. It's in the waiting. It's in the waiting. Charlie once said, our investing strategy is basically passive aggressive. We're very passive most of the time, and then once in a while, we get very aggressive. And in just a moment, you guys, I'm gonna show you exactly how to know when to be passive, how to know what you're waiting for, and when to get very aggressive. All right, you guys, so good. Let's discuss some simple principles here about rule one investing, all right? I know this can sound like a lot of work. Sure, everything new sounds like a lot of work, right? But this really is not, okay? Just follow my lead because I'm about to show you how easy this can really be. So, okay, I want you to grab a pen right now. Let's get involved in this. I want you to take some notes, okay? So I'm gonna go through this fairly quickly, but it's pretty simple stuff, you guys. It's simple to understand and it's simple to implement, especially when you have my tools, okay? Now, we'll get back to that. But first, a quick overview, and then I'll get into the details and the action steps. First thing, you're gonna find a company, I want you to write this down, so <laughs> write it down. You're gonna find a company that matches your values. That matches your values. You're gonna wait till it's on sale. You're gonna buy a piece of that company as if you're gonna buy the whole thing. And then you're gonna sell it later when the market gets greedy again for a profit. And you're gonna repeat that until rich, <laughs> okay? It's all pretty simple, you guys, especially when you have my tools and coaching. So, okay, that's the what. Here's the how. 
we're going to look at how we find that great company to invest in. Why? Because what all these great investors have in common, what they've all told us is that you need to find a way to buy a wonderful business and buy it when it's on sale. So we got to start with, okay, how do we find a wonderful business? And what does it look like when it's on sale? Well, when you do it right, you get a great company and it's like buying a $10 bill for $5. You think you could make money if I gave you $10 bills and you gave me five? Do you think you could probably get rich eventually if we kept doing it? And that's what we're gonna do in the market. We wanna get these great businesses on our radar. We wanna get aware of them. So how can we do that? I mean, come on, if you're working as a school teacher or, hey, if you're working as a school teacher, you got advantages I never had. I'm working as a river guide. What am I doing in the bottom of the Grand Canyon, right? So first off, how do I even begin to find a company? So imagine you could call up Warren Buffett and ask him what he just bought, okay? What he paid, how many shares he bought. If I could show you how to find that out. And by finding it out, it's just like Warren answering that call. And you can put these companies on your radar and you can invest just like Warren Buffett does. He calls it coattailing. He coattailed or copied Ben Graham. That was one of Buffett's great secrets. And this is the number one way to find a great company that's priced way below market value. You copy someone who's been doing it for 30 or 40 years and do what they do. Isn't that the truth about everything you want to learn? Copy the very best. In fact, a team of researchers at University of Nevada, Las Vegas, they thought, hmm, let's take a look at this, this little principle, this coattailing principle. And they published a study. They saw that coattailing an investor like Warren Buffett from 1976 to 2006, just buying companies on the last day of the month in the month where he publicly announced he was buying that company at the worst price that day, and then selling it in the month that he, he publicly said he sold it on the last day of the month at the, at the absolute worst price that day, and do that through that whole 30 year period. They did that. And if you had done it, you would have made 24% per year through bear markets, bull markets, up, down, volatile, whatever. Warren Buffett, learned from Ben Graham this principle of coattailing, and then Warren taught people who then taught me, and now I'm teaching you. This is Monash Prabhai's favorite thing in the world to do, is to coattail other great investors. So if I'm you, I'm probably asking, well, how can I know how to coattail Warren? How can I know what Warren's doing with this money? So great question. The answer is, I know. And I am more than happy to show you exactly what the big guys are doing. It's really simple. I built a tool called Guru Stocks, and we'll teach you how to use it at our training workshops. We're gonna go through exactly what these gurus, these top investors are buying and selling. Investors like Warren Buffett, Bill Ackman, Charlie Munger, Bruce Berkowitz, and many, many others. In fact, I even have this information structured into the toolbox that I originally built for myself. I spent $4 million on this thing, so it just saved me a lot of time, a lot of digging, and I found it so easy to use that basically my students can use it too. 11,000 stocks from around the world are tracked inside the toolbox every second. Over 500 million pieces of data are transferred through this and calculated and, and manipulated every single day. It tracks the buying and selling of the best investors in the world, a bunch of gurus that I curated out of 8,000 investors to a small number that I really trust. So the toolbox is awesome. So you guys, this should be easy. One said, basically you should invest as if you're only gonna buy about 20 stocks in your lifetime. I want you to take that really seriously, 20 stocks. I mean, for many of you, that's like a stock a year. For some of you, that's like half a stock a year, right? That's all you have to do. And if you find those 20 stocks following the strategy that this system will teach you, you will become wealthy. Warren Buffett says that diversification is for the ignorant. You don't need to do all that, you guys. The Buffett believes, as I do, in finding just a few great businesses. This is so key. And if you put your money in a mutual fund, you guys, those managers are gonna scatter your money over a couple hundred stocks, which makes no sense to me when most of the stock investors that I 
truly trust have a fraction of that number in their portfolios. In fact, Charlie Munger thinks this is so stupid. He said that 95% of the people managing your money are basically like witch doctors. Absolutely no clue about reality. Okay, so let's go back to getting those businesses onto your radar. The type of business that I'm looking for and the ones that Buffett and other rock star investors are looking for. What are those companies like, you guys? What are you looking for on your checklist? Okay, here's the first thing. Super, super cool. Warren Buffett's one of the most value-oriented investors in the world in a way that nobody actually is aware of. And that is, he puts his money where his values are. I think of that as saying like, put your money where your mouth is. You know how we all talk about how it all should be? That's what's coming out of your mouth. In other words, walk your talk and walk your talk with your money. Think about it like this. If you buy one share of a company, we treat that like you're buying the entire company. So you guys imagine somebody telling their kid not to smoke, but they own a cigarette company. Total hypocrite, right? And that's not you. But then again, if you own a mutual fund and you're telling your kid not to smoke, guess what? You do own a cigarette company. If you own an ETF, you are supporting all of the companies in that ETF. Everything in that ETF is something you're supporting. I'll tell you, man, I believe in karma. I don't know about you, but I really do. And it's a common concept all over the world, right? Karma or over here in the Western world, it's all about, you know, you reap what you sow. And imagine that it's just like you're putting your money into things that are doing things in the world that you're telling your kids not to do. We don't want to do that. We want to take control of our money and put it where our values are. Now, next thing, you got to have a management team that you really believe in, that has talent and integrity. Because often, essentially, you know, you're betting on the jockey, right? you got a great company to start with, but what can they do with it? And you know some CEOs are wonderful, and some CEOs are in it for themselves, right? Now, to me, that's not leadership. I learned leadership at Fort Benning at Army OCS, Officers Candidate School, where the motto of infantry officers is follow me. So first into the line of fire, right? That lieutenant's the last to eat. They're the last to sleep. They're taking care of their people because they're all about their mission. They're there for their people. That's what we want in a leader. Don't, don't you guys want that in a CEO that you work for? So what do you say we support business leaders who are there for their team, for their environment, for their community, and stop putting money with those bastards who are out there just for themselves, trying to get more money so they can have a bigger boat? <laughs> That's what rule one investing, in my view, is all about. It's about values and putting our money to push those values out into the world. Here's the amazing thing. We all think like we don't have that power. You guys together, we have 85% of the money in the stock market. 85% is little guy money. And if we stopped giving it to these people on Wall Street and started learning to invest so we can vote our own values, my God, you guys, we would change the world overnight. And that's why I'm, that's why I'm doing this. That's why I'm sitting on this screen with you because I have seen this happen. There's a revolution going on in investing right now and you need to be part of it so we can change the world. Okay, let's get back to a few companies that you love, all right? Now let's talk about when to get in and when to get out because that gets to be kind of important. We get in, as I said earlier, when there's fear and we get out when there's greed. But how do we know for sure that's happening? So you guys, I'm going to show you one of the coolest tools on the planet. It's amazing how effectively these things work. They've been working spectacularly well to take us out of risk and put us in a good position for the last 20 years. So this is a fantastic tool. It was originally built for the big guys, right? So I'm going to show you guys how to use it. It's very, very easy. So first off, we're going to see that we've got three different tools here. The first one that I'm pointing to right here with this red arrow is called a moving average. When the moving average thinks the psychology of the market is negative, getting toward fear, you get a red arrow like this. Now, the second tool is called a MACD. This is a tool tracking momentum. And when we get a red arrow like this, it means the momentum's moving out of the market. And the third red arrow is stochastic. And this is tracking contrarians who are exiting the market ahead of the big guys. 
And when we get a red arrow, the contrarians are moving out too. When we get three red arrows all at the same time from three different major aspects of the market, ooh, time to get out. So what would we do? We'd pull our money out at that point in time. Now, I want you guys to follow along here as we go on the chat box. So we've got three red arrows here. One, two, three, and we get out, right? Now, the opposite applies with three green arrows. We get a green arrow on stochastic. It's saying the contrarians are moving in. Green arrow MACD, ah, momentum moving up. And a green arrow on the moving average. Here comes the psychology of the market getting greedy, and we buy back in. So we buy in on green, we sell on red. So buy on green, sell on red. You guys got it? Now in the chat box, you guys put in what you should do when I put up these arrows. You ready? And we got three greens. Now what do we do? Buy. Now I'm going to go fast, so just put an S and a B. So here we go. Three reds. Three greens. Three reds. Three greens. Three reds. Three greens. We're going faster. Three reds. And guess what? We just covered from 2006 to 2020 on one of the biggest mutual funds in the world. And we just made $12,000 on our first trade. 66,000 went up on the second trade. We went up to 205,000 on the third, 244,000 on the fourth, and 274,000 on the fifth trade. We just went from $100,000 to $274,000 over that period of time when this stock actually went down about 5%. So if you just left your money in Fidelity Magellan in the mutual fund, you'd now have about $95,000. Instead, just using these simple arrows, a handful of trades over a few years, you avoided those huge drops. You got back into the market when it was time, when fear had subsided, greed began again, and now you're up $274,000. You guys like these arrows? Well, since the arrows worked out well, why don't the big guys use the arrows? Gee, they don't know about the arrows? Oh, heck yeah, the big guys know about the arrows. The arrows were built for the big guys. So why don't they use them? Because they are the arrows. It takes billions to move this market, billions of dollars to create an arrow. And if you're a guy who's waiting for the arrow and you're running a fund and your boss comes in and goes, hey, Bob, what are you waiting for? He goes, well, I'm waiting for that third arrow. He goes, you are the third arrow, you moron. You're fired. But guess what? They screwed up. Us little guys can use these arrows because we can move quickly. These guys it might take them six to eight weeks to get in, take six to eight weeks to get out. You know how long it takes me? Six to eight seconds. And the same with you. So, okay, this is pretty sexy stuff. You're going to love this stuff when you really start using it, particularly if you're already a mutual fund investor. This could have saved you a huge fortune. All right, you guys. So finally, let's get back to the idea of patience, of passiveness, of waiting, right? What Charlie said is the most important thing, waiting. One of the core principles of rule one investing is to wait for an opportunity. Now, that opportunity comes in the form of something we call an event. And if you're still writing notes, write that down. It can be one of the most important things you write down all day. And let me explain it this way, okay? So you've got a decision you want to make. You've already selected a few companies and put them on a watch list. And these are companies you love. They match your values. You understand the business. Now, for me, that might be something like Chipotle burritos or something because I love Chipotle burritos. And I've got it on my list. And now you got a choice. You could be one of those people that spends all day glued to CNBC. You're constantly trading and you're spending 18 hours a day stressed out. You could do that. <laughs> or you could do what I do. You just relax and use the rule one strategy. And that means you're hardly going to spend any time at all on these investments once you've done the basic homework. I have a life, you guys. I don't spend much time at all working on investments. I like to read. I do that a lot. I love to do what I do. And what most of these rock stars are doing is sitting around playing bridge. What Buffett did all the time. He just plays bridge and waiting for the next opportunity. And that next opportunity comes in the form of an event. Now, here's my definition of an event. 
It's the time when you are going to be greedy when everybody else is fearful. <laughs> Let me say it again because it's super important. An event is the opportunity to be greedy when other people have become fearful. All right, now let me be a little more specific. What you're waiting for is this event, this thing that happens that creates some kind of fear in the market or in this industry, or maybe even in that particular company, fear that makes fund managers really get nervous. Now, one of these events is a big market crash. Everybody gets nervous when that happens. As the market starts to melt down, let's say, the people who run mutual funds and ETFs get very scared. And this means that wonderful businesses start to go on sale. And suddenly you and I and Warren Buffett get to pay $5 for $10 bills. Now let me give an illustration of that, okay? Imagine you're in a theater and it's really crowded and you're all watching a movie. And then you see this person get up and start walking back out of the theater. You happen to know that this person is really good at smelling smoke. And you're watching them walk. And as they walk by you, you go, hey, Bob, where are you going? And he goes, oh, I'm just going up to the bathroom. And you don't believe him for a second. You think, this guy's smelling smoke in this theater, and I'm getting out of here with him. And so you get up out of your seat, and you start walking with him. And somebody asks you, where are you guys going? You're going? We're going to the bathroom. And you keep walking, and the next person gets up and walks with you. Now there's three of you walking out to go to the bathroom, and it's starting to get weird. And now four, and then five, and then eight, and then ten. And then pretty soon, everyone in the theater knows something's going on here. And even if they don't smell any smoke, even if they don't have any idea what's going on, they're getting up and going to the bathroom with you. And all of a sudden, you have a stampede trying to get out one door. And what happens is fund managers know that and they know they got to get going first. They got to get out that door first. And that's what creates an event. Some kind of problem happens, fund managers start running to the door and one after another they go. Now, pretty great situation to be in to buy $10 bills for $5 if you've set yourself up to do it. This is how you successfully save for a dream retirement. This is how you do it, you guys. This is what Buffett's been doing for 60 years. It's what I've been doing for 40 years. You can absolutely do this. Here's some events. Riots, wars, some kind of disaster. A well blows up in the Gulf of Mexico. Um, a big cotton crop burns up in, in Egypt. Big global changes. And you and I have seen this. It happens all the time. Everything from weather events like hurricanes, oil spills in the Gulf, pandemics, and more, right? We never know, it's something all the time. Only this time, instead of sitting on the sidelines and writing this out and being worried about where your retirement's going and will the market ever come back, you are gonna be making money both when the market's going down and when the market's going up. So all of these things that create fear in fund managers, they're gonna start running for the exits and suddenly we have this event, it's not creating fear on you, it's creating an opportunity to create wealth. I wait for these events. And when they happen, I'm poised, I'm ready. I'm ready to pounce like a tiger <laughs> when these opportunities come up. And here's how Warren looks at this whole event thing. Warren said, the best way to do this is to imagine you've got a punch card, you got 20 punches, you can, you can make in it in your entire life, just 20, and you invest when you know you got a big margin of safety, 20 punches and you're gonna be rich, and that's it, in your whole life. That's all you gotta do. So that's a lot of sitting around time, you guys. A lot of sitting around time, waiting for those opportunities where you pounce. Okay, so we're almost done, you guys. In just a moment, I'm gonna give a few of you something really exciting and free as a bonus, but right now, do this. If chat's available to you, jump in there right now and share one of the biggest things you learned on today's training, okay? Do that now. So while you're doing that, let me just take you back to the Colorado River and the Grand Canyon. You remember my ride through Crystal Rapids? So I'm gonna ask you the same question that my mentor asked me on the banks of the Colorado River. You ready? If you wanna learn about the stock market, I can teach you how to be a smart investor. Are you interested? You remember what happened when I took a little risk on myself? When I just got out of my comfort zone? Everything changed for the better from then on, and I mean, 
everything in my life and in my kids' life and in their kids' life, generationally for my family. It shouldn't take a near-death moment for you to want to change your life. You're already here. All you need is a little courage and the willingness to try to try something new, you guys. So let me ask you something. What would your financial freedom mean to you? What would it look like to you? What would it feel like to you to be financially free? I mean, maybe you'll travel the world. Maybe you'll buy that vacation house in Jackson Hole you always wanted. I owned one. I mean, maybe you'll invest in your kids and grandkids. I did. My kids went to Ivy League colleges. I mean, maybe you'll buy a piece of land and raise horses. <laughs> yeah, man. I like that one. Maybe you'll fund a charity. Or maybe you'll just find time to breathe a little and smile and finally have a freedom in your life to enjoy your life. You know what I'm talking about? You know what I'm talking about? Because something great has just kind of started to appear in your mind. You know what you think about every day. That one place you really want to live. Come on, man, that one activity that just makes you super happy and you want to do it every day. You know what that is because you think about it when you're at work. You think about it stuck in traffic. Wherever you might be, that dream comes rolling through. And that's what Rule One Investing is all about. It's all about helping you make your dream a reality. And if you're willing to be pushed a little bit and learn a few new things, slide out of your comfort zone slightly, you guys then welcome aboard. So are you ready to learn how to invest money the right way? Now remember, what money gave me, what it can do for you is freedom. The ability to do what you want when you want to do it. And man, it can do the same thing for you now when you learn how. So guys, I'd like to invite you to a training I believe is going to change your life. And by changing your life, I'm going to help change the world to be a better place. I'd like to teach you like my mentor taught me. I'll show you everything you need to know. I'll even give you the tools that make it easy to do. All you got to do is be willing to say yes. And I'm going to make this decision really easy for you. We have a workshop right around the corner. And last I checked, we still have a few seats open. Plus, when you act right now and beat the crowd, I'll give you access to two fast action bonuses so you can start immediately. All the details on Rule 1 Investing Workshop are on the link on this page. And if it's not there or in the chat, I'll give you a URL in just a moment that'll get you there. Now, the bottom line is you're going to get the same red carpet treatment my best students receive. You're going to work with me. I also have my coaches there. So you're going to get a lot of personal attention, hours of personal attention. Plus, you're going to get access to my online tools, the toolbox, same exact ones I use, all my analysts are using, which do a lot of work for you. Here's what you're going to discover in our days together. How to find great companies, how to match your values with your money, how to find that big event, which is huge because this means you buy $10 for five bucks, how to maintain your margin of safety so you protect your capital, how to reduce your risk. And then when we get into some real more advanced financial tools, including some options, you're going to understand how to create cash flow and reduce your potential exposure to zero. How cool would that be? And how to create super high cash flow in retirement so you're not eating beanie weenies and struggling to survive. You're rolling on cash flow and how to do that with just a small percentage of the money you think you're going to need. And you guys, there's going to be a ton more. And by the way, students have told me that these days in the workshop are better than two years in an MBA that cost them over $100,000. In fact, we used to charge $5,000 for the workshop and it's worth it. We've done that all over the world. But when you enroll today, you're going to get it for just a few hundred bucks. And how about that for a deal, you guys? So here's what I want you to do right now. Depending on where you are watching this, there's either a link on the page below or a link in chat. And if not, the website is simple. It's just www.rule1investing.com slash workshop. That's www.rule1investing.com slash workshop. Now go there right now and grab your seat before we close. There is a deadline for enrollment and it's this week. Oh yeah. <laughs> and as a fast action, the first 15 people to enroll right now are guaranteed to get two more bonuses. First, you'll get instant access to my online investing toolbox, the one I spent four million bucks building, the one I use all the time. Remember the example I gave you with the arrows that show you when to buy, when to sell? I'm going to give you that when you jump in right now, you guys. That way you can get started right away. Take a look at your mutual funds. Hey, are they red? You need to get out? 
You better know now, huh? And your second bonus is huge. You remember, I told you that I have all the information on what Warren Buffett and the other big dogs, guys like Bill Ackman, Charlie Munger, Bruce Berkowitz, and many others, what they're buying and selling. I call this the guru stocks, right? It's the guru stock search tool. It's a fully interactive curated list of my personal favorite investors who I follow. This list is worth a fortune. And that way, I'm letting you just jump in on this secret right now, how to find great companies fast that are already pre-selected by the best investors in the world, you guys. It's like having Warren Buffett personally call you up and say, hey man, this is what I'm buying right now. It's that good. You're gonna get training, the one we used to offer for $5,000. You're gonna get my online toolbox, spent millions building. You're gonna get the guru stocks, which is just worth thousands of dollars all by itself. You're gonna also get one of my coaches in your corner helping you one-on-one -on -one so you get a lot of personal attention. But you better go get it right now because it's gonna be gone soon. The sole purpose of the workshop is to teach you, teach you exactly what you need to know to start investing teach you to take control of your financial future and create generational wealth for your family and change the world. It's a totally different model than a normal event, you guys. It's not one of those seminars where people get you in the room for three days and they pound away trying to sell you something. I once paid to attend a workshop. I spent two days listening to people I didn't know trying to sell me stuff and it was annoying. I vowed right then and there, I would never do that type of event. This is all training all the time. So you have a decision to make. You can kind of keep doing what you're doing right now and hope that your current strategy works, which it probably won't, especially if you're in mutual funds, or you can come to this workshop and you can learn rule one investing and you will discover what's currently working for rock star investors and for hardworking people who are just like you and who simply want the retirement they deserve. And I'll tell you, I know what this can feel like. Back on the Colorado River, I was skeptical. I was nervous. Frankly, it really had to do more with my own lack of confidence than anything else. But man, I was just at that place where I said, I got to do it. I took a chance and it changed my life forever. I've been very successful as an investor. I'm investing in millions of dollars, written several books, built this beautiful ranch, got a fabulous family, had the blessings of teaching thousands of students just like you. My God, you guys, if I could do it, so can you. Come on, have some courage. Take a chance, do it. Just do it now. I think like me, you're gonna look back at this time as the best decision you ever made in your life. And there's even more reason to do this now. The market now. There are some opportunities that are opening up in the market you really don't want to miss. And I mean, you really don't want to. What would it be like to jump into a time machine and buy Apple and Google for pennies on the dollar, right? That's about to happen again in some part of the market and we're digging into it in the workshop. And if you wait, you are gonna miss out again. You spent too much of your life on the missing outside, guys. I know what that's like. So why not join me and my prosperous students and alumni and coaches? So do it now. Just get off the fence and make a change. I loved being able to, in one day of being here, do a whole story on a company and work on it for like three hours and be able to, you know, get get through and present a whole company and why I would invest and why I wouldn't invest, which I wouldn't be able to do before. Typically they tease you with like, oh, well, if you do this, you'll make money, but take our high, you always get the upsell in the course. And it's been very refreshing to come here and not having somebody trying to upsell me on another product. Getting here and going through that and having those counselors there for us to turn to and ask questions to, that's a gold mine of information. Really feeling comfortable with, you know, how to price out that stock and then knowing when to make a move and knowing how much of a move to make. Oh, feels phenomenal. Like you just, uh, the wealth of information that he has and he's so, for a man of his stature, he is so down to earth, so uh, humble even. Like just listening to him talk, you could just, you can tell that that's a person you could probably go camping with and listen to him 
room tell campfire stories for probably 20 years. Phil Town, uh, uh, he's a total babe. He's a silver fox, I'm sorry. Phil Town is amazing. He, he has a way of combining his sense of humor and fun with money and translating that to the room, which is a huge gift because not a lot of people can do that. And I think that's what sets Phil apart from other in investing strategies and stuff like that. Like he just has a way of relating to everybody in the room, which is really great. I would tell you to take this course because I learned things this weekend that um, I've already applied and it's gonna take me places that I've never been before. Yes, take this course, absolutely. If somebody is wondering to themselves, should I take it, should I not, the, you know, there's a bit of a ticket price to that, can I afford it? You can't afford not to come. That's probably the best investment that I've done. Wide open. My financial future is wide open. It, uh, all of the limitations that were there before have been lifted away. There's there's no reason not to take action. The worst thing to do is not take action. I'm leaving with a lot of confidence that I can find companies and do those filters and use the formulas on my own. Literally, night and day, walking in, not knowing anything about buying stocks, and I feel like I could go make millions right now, and it's only day two. He really teaches us how to uh, do deep research from every company before we invest. So basically now I have a very clear checklist of every single thing that I need to check before I make a decision and, uh, and buy some stocks. God, he's so dreamy. Like, that's probably like the wrong answer, hey? But he's like, 